Dear real estate developers, in the past several months of working for the USPS and now for the Census Bureau, I've seen more of the area I live in than some people see in their whole lives. There are some really beautiful areas that I would love to live in. However, I would like to bring to your attention the fact that your plans are creating a lot of problems. Sure, you make pretty subdivisions with low traffic, which undoubtedly means fewer accidents, but what about the negative consequences? Let's look at that. 1. Ecological destruction. In some areas, you buy up large properties and then trash the entire ecosystem, killing whatever flora and fauna live there as well as removing the topsoil, which is often really thin here. Further, you make top dollar, allowing you to buy up and turn around more and more properties while giving relatively little to the people you buy from and giving far less to those you sell to than you might from the ones you buy from. Number two, higher temperature. You eventually, possibly, plant a small number of trees and bushes and plant a lot, whole lot of grass. This is not even close to being ecologically sound and causes the temperature to go up because there's a lack of tree cover. Look up Urban Heat Island and Albedo, A-L-B-E-D-O. Why not plan out everything so that you can keep old trees in place wherever possible? Leaving big trees benefits animals and helps provide shade and lower temperatures in the summer instead of residents having to wait a decade or two for the same effect from samplings, saplings you plant. Why not offer alternatives to big lawns that encourage people to have flower gardens, or better yet, food gardens, a definite help in this time of economic crisis? Or that allow for more wildlife, both of which would be attractive to someone like me. Number three, bad traffic. The traffic grid of the entire area becomes congested. The more subdivisions with no through traffic that there are, the worse the traffic is going to be during the rush hours on the few roads that cut through. This causes more accidents overall than cities laid out on a grid. Longer commutes because of those accidents and traffic jams. More air and water pollution from emissions and from liquids dripping out of stopped vehicles onto the roads. More gas consumption and repairs result resulting in higher commute costs and so on. These dead-end communities also complicate deliveries of mail, packages, and more, as well as making it harder to find a place. In some places, it's difficult to find the way in, and once you get in, it's difficult to find the way out. Number four, excessive power consumption. Whether you're using an AC or fans, the lack of tree shade and subsequent higher temperature results in you having to use more electricity and the devices you use to cool off your home then heat up your local environment further. If the AC is positioned in a well-lit area outdoors, that reduces its efficiency as it has to both cool off the air from inside while being heated up by the sunlight. Number five, ugliness. From my perspective, your neighborhoods without trees and other plants are just ugly. Your subdivisions sometimes turn once beautiful areas into eyesores because you opt for getting the most money you can with no concern for residents, aesthetics, and the environment. I love going to communities with homegrown gardens, whether that be food or decorative plants or both, and an ample supply of trees shading the roads and houses. They're so beautiful. Places that choose to use black and or dark wood mulch get a lower score because that black mulch really works to absorb more heat than lighter colors or pine needles. In fact, evergreen needles don't make it hot, are a great choice because they inhibit weeds and unwanted seed uh, growth like those pesky maple helicopters because of the chemicals that are in the evergreen needles and they have a nice smell. As a mail carrier, I hated going into new subdivisions, neighborhoods, and business areas with few trees. They were always hot and had very little in the way of shade, which sucks when you're in a, sh a vehicle that's at least 10 degrees hotter and sometimes much more than that than compared to the air outside. And there's no shelter to use when you park for a break or lunch. Or even when you're on your route, you get back to a ba a an oven from your route. If you're walking, it is even worse because the only shelter from the sunshine and heat is your very hot, hot vehicle. It's exhausting delivering to a six-hour route in those conditions, whether you are driving your postal vehicle, which has no air conditioner and just one tiny fan, or you're walking and then going back to your baking hot vehicle because you can't leave your windows open to let it cool off at all. Please take these and other things into consideration and make better decisions, even if there isn't a city or county planner telling you what to do. Please, please, thank you.